Do okay. people call you DM? DM, Danger Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> for you, what does rejection mean? Well, for that, you have to attend one of my courses. No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> I do, but I think some of the points which I've, alhamdulillah, put this into a blog form, because, you know, there's a lot happening in the dawah and you get busy, but sometimes Allah gives you the uh, opportunity to write things down and pen things down. So one of the things I would advise that, uh, and this is how I approach it, is expect it. Tell us that, you know, you've had some experiences with some brothers that have contacted you saying they want to be involved in Dawah and you ask them, well, why? Like, I want to be a superstar, yeah. I want to be a superstar speaker. They, they say it. Nah, bro, uh, this must be kids, this. man. I, I, it I, has I, to be I, kids. I, I want to be, they'll, they'll say certain speakers' names. I want to become like him. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters welcome back to another episode of Rerooted Raw Today I have a very special guest, a very special friend, a very special brother Nadeem Dao Motivation Ashraf Assalamu alaikum bro Like salam wa rahmatullah, you give me another middle name Mashallah. It would be a nice thing to add in there Alhamdulillah Because I now, a lot of times when I think about you I think Dao Motivation Because as the brand if, if it motivates you to get your own Dao and keeps you on it, Alhamdulillah yeah, I don't mind. We'll, we'll talk about Dao motivation as we go along, inshallah. Sure. So, look, bro, today's episode, I want to sort of loosely revolve, revolve the discussion around Dao pitfalls. Mm, yeah. Okay? Dao downfalls, if mm. you like. You've been in the Dao for close to 30 years, mashallah. Yeah, since, since 1994, but not consistently. So, there's been gaps where I was away from the okay. Dao as well. But, I mean, yeah. 30 years, even when you're returning, several times is, is a is a long haul basically yeah, it's a long run mashallah yeah. and may Allah give you another 30 productive years in the productive dawah, yes that's the key. yeah um, I mean. you know so so there's there's a whole host of let's we can say wisdom insights mm. um, experiences that you can share with us and i'm sure that could benefit a lot of people watching this because you know we have a lot of people that are interested in dawah yeah. motivated to give dawah want to give dawah want to learn about the da'wah. So I'm sure they will really benefit from today's episode. Sure. Now, I've known you for several years, you know, maybe close to what, close to a decade now almost. Uh, I wouldn't say a decade. Less, maybe eight years, seven, 2015 seven? onwards, so six, five, six years. Six years, It okay. seems like a long right, time. Six years. So that's a good thing. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, and I've known you, and I've known you, bro, as okay. a very... Well, when I, when, when I see you in the, in, the, in the spectrum of the da'wah, I see you as someone that's more senior, but someone that has a very young, lively, energetic spirit, yeah? Which is very, mashallah, you know, mm. may Allah preserve you. It's very rare to I see. Mean. And one thing that really fascinates me about you, just personally being in the Dao for, you know, several years and, and, and at times feeling like burnout, tired, fatigued, you know, just confused at times. You know, yeah. it happens. happens. Everyone goes through yeah, burnouts does, yeah, yeah. at times. And I just, what really fascinated me about you was that you had this energy after close to 30 years in the Dao, which you still have today, mm. right? Yeah. <clears throat> what's, what's, the, what's the secret behind this energy? Well, first of all, bro, thanks for the nice words. I didn't know you uh, thought that about me, alhamdulillah. So if it's had that effect on someone like you, because I know, Masha, you're very active in the Dao, you've got your channel, you're also looked upon as a very, you know, a serious and a senior Da'i, mashallah. Uh, with Ayera and otherwise, so coming from you, if that's, if that's helped you, then alhamdulillah bro, you know, that's excellent. Uh, what keeps me going? You know, I, I've always been someone, when I get passionate about something, I give it my all. So if I go back my, let's say, mid to late teens, I was obsessed with cricket. So after the 1992 World Cup, yeah. Pakistan won it, Imran Khan, all that. Uh, I was one of those in that way that got carried away and got into cricket. And became otherwise I wasn't I used to play a little bit, but how many years did you play for? Well actually but how many years were you obsessed with cricket? So uh, two, three years. And the next thing I got obsessed with Hamla was Islam. So before that I was guided to Islam. So before that cricket and then when I was in cricket it was day and night. And I was so obsessed, this may come across as weird, yeah. I don't know if you know there's a whole thing called Wisdom Wisdom Book of Almanac, which is records. Mm. County records, old records. I used to read that. That's how obsessed was that. I used to play cricket inside the house, broken the patio <coughs> enough times. So I was passionate about that. Now, subhanAllah, when Islam came, and obviously before we started practicing Islam, and Dawah came, I said, this is it. But that was my first stage in the Dawah because I was involved in Dawah uh, mid to late 90s. 
early 2000s. Then I went to work. And then, alhamdulillah, 2012, I would say, was my uh, return back to the da'wah again, alhamdulillah. Mm. And so if I was about the second phase in the da'wah, um, this is it. I'm dedicated to this. So I can't do other things at the same time yeah. as good or as passionate about. Well, so see, yeah. the, the, the thing is, Mo, when especially in the Dao, you don't see most people returning after they leave. Yeah, see. subhanAllah. So, and you've seen this through the 90s, yeah, you've yeah, told us stories, yeah. right? Uh, very rarely do you see people returning once they've sort of yeah. packed up yeah. and moved on. Not that they've left Islam, they're still yes, mashallah, practicing, etc. Yeah. But they've, yeah. they've become occupied with other things. You don't see people returning. So, what yes. led to your return? So, bro, uh, first of all, I have to say I'm extremely privileged, and I'm not saying this as words that subhanAllah, it's an honor, it's uh, it's some good deeds I may have done, you know, when I started practicing Islam, uh, as they say, you know, dua of the mother, but subhanAllah, um, I had no idea I'll come back to that. So first of all, I'm grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? It's because it's an honor, it's a privilege. Uh, but it was basically Hamza, Hamza Zortis and Adnan Adn Rashid when they did a tour of Pakistan in 2012. Winds of Change, wasn't it? Winds of Change, that's yeah. the first Winds of Change tour. So they did a tour and again, I went there with no intention of getting involved in I made hijra to live with, uh, with my family, to just raise them up, raise my kids up. Um, and subhanAllah, Qadr Allah, I heard they're coming. And when I heard their talks, they talked about motivational dawah, about changing the world, about, you know, uh, from the sunnah, usut al-hasana. And these things, uh, uh, it's like almost for me, it's like, a, like the fitrah, you know, we don't mm. have fitrah. The dawah fitrah was reawakened again. I was involved in the 90s. And when I was listening to lectures, I think, yeah, subhanAllah, I was involved. You mentioned the 90s, yeah? Mm. Um, yeah. Tell us a bit about the dawah in the 90s, bro. What was it like? It's, yeah, it's very, it's like, yeah, very. Your face is suddenly. Yeah, I mean, I'm just like, it's like you know going back in the clouds and foggy and going back, you know, all these years. Uh, I mean, there's various things to be said on that, right? I mean, I would say, when I was involved in the Dawah myself, I was never actively speaking, so conveying. Mm. I was more for three, four years at least, giving out leaflets, uh, the odd advice to a Muslim. How, if I was to speak to a Christian or an atheist, it was just very basic misconceptions. What was the concept back then? So when you when you thought of the dawah in the 90s, when someone said, okay, we're going to give dawah, yeah. what did that mean? Like, what was the idea behind Bahamia? So what were you dawah stalls was the big thing then, Okay, of course. Uh, of course, now it's online and everything. But yeah, dawah stall, giving out leaflets, these are the main thing. One-to-one uh, -one dawah was very big, you know, like speaking to, so if you're in the workplace, if you're working hospital, if you're working university, giving dawah, engaging with your non-Muslim and Muslim friends was a big thing, right? So you learn Islam, you start practicing Islam, you learn Islam and you share what you learn. That's what it was, very simple. Mm -hmm. there, there were two aspects I, wanted, I do want to touch upon quickly, right? One is that ikhlas and sincerity was very strong. I remember myself and the brothers who I used to hang around with, when I started practicing Islam, my first mentors, Things like, you know, we used, to, we used to read books like Realities of Faith mm. by Ibn Game or Purification of the Soul, which is by Ibn Rajab Al-Ghazali and Ibn Game. And these were like drummed into us, bro. Mm. Like halakas in the masjid. That, so the must connection was big. That was the must. Yeah. yeah. So that was, um, uh, I remember this is a different to now. So masjid was the center point, right? Where we used to have our halakas, uh, bits. There wasn't much of a dawah training. It was more just learning about Islam. So being hidden, don't seek fame. You know, don't worry about it. it's not promoting yourself. That was something big. So that was a good thing. The 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 negative aspect of what we learn, and the reason there's reasons for that as well, uh, and that is that you know we didn't have any qualified scholars around with them. I'm I'm living in a town called Crawley, so there weren't really any qualified scholars. Uh, in generally in, in UK they weren't. Right, they came later on. Uh, there wasn't that. You don't have YouTube. You can't just access. Mm. So. Uh, that, and we didn't have any seniors, any anybody with experience. You know, wisdom and experience counts a lot. So we were kind of going as as we along, mm -hmm. reading books and learning as we go along. So you, but you said sincerity, like yeah. you said, sincerity was big. Then. That was yeah. something that was pushed a lot. So yeah. Do you think it's not the case now? The Dao? So as you know, I'm always talking about this because so I'm, uh, I'm wondering because yeah. you said it was then that was the case, but maybe I'm assuming that you mean now it isn't the case. Well, now it's because as we were discussing about the, the algorithm, right? As you as you mm. put it together, becoming an uh, uh, like a slave to algorithm. So now that's pushed a lot because you know if you want to uh, push out your social media, if you want to, you need to do certain algorithms. You just do certain strategies. That's what's pushed. So what, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's you know this. We're not saying you know we're not here to get fatwa, but have a balance. On the other side, do remember the hadith on fame, and how the salaf used to warn us against fame. How the hadith about you know uh, being hidden, 
uh, these are these are very critical as well. I think they should be talked more and more right now. Yeah. Abdul algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, but that's what yeah. it, is. it is the case. But, Slave, but yeah. so you said that there was harsh elements. That, that was the good. So yeah, the, the the good was that we were sincerity. Yeah, this brotherhood. was pushed a lot. Yeah. This was pushed a, again and again. And knowledge. Again. Yeah. So we were. So we weren't. We weren't. Don't don't seek to speak because then mm. obviously you know don't sp- don't they, I want to speak. I want to speak. Don't put yourself. Uh, on the podium, don't yeah. put yourself on the stage. Be behind the scenes. Be hidden. You know. Okay, so you're saying that sin- was a good aspect. Sincerity, knowledge, yeah. and yeah. yeah, don't be public facing. Don't seek that. Basically, don't seek that. Okay, yeah. good. So, what was the negative? The negative was that Subhanallah, we were really harsh in our dawah. We were harsh towards Muslims and non-Muslims. Because remember, my experience of the dawah stall and the dawah team I was working in Crawley in Sussex was we were giving dawah to both. So mm. it wasn't just non-Muslims; it was Muslim youth as well, right? Why we? Why? Why do you think the harshness was there? As I said to the previous point, which was that we didn't have ulama with us, uh, qualified ulama. But you were reading right? loads of books. But that's I, I. I feel that just reading books is not enough. You need some sort of guidance. You know, you can't. You need uh, Islam has always traditionally been with scholars. You know, okay. It, Isnad is good if it's not critical, but it's good to have that Isnad, that same tradition that's been going on the last 14 years. We didn't have that. We were just reading books and kind of because the what happened with the, a lot of these brothers, they left the Dawah and they went on to other things, some of which was dangerous, right? So um, we, that that was the issue that if we had guidance, if we had ulama, even if we had wise old brothers that's been there, done that, we didn't have that at all. Mm. We were kind of making it up as we go along. Yeah. So harshness was there. I remember in the Dawah stall that we would either laugh at non-Muslims, so if someone was to, was to say they're, they're a certain sexual orientation or they are a certain view, we would laugh at it. We would laugh and mock it so much in the hope that they get inspired. I know it kind of happens now as well. So if you mock enough, all of a sudden you go, ah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's what we thought. And it was straight off, it was debating. It was straight off, it was just uh, debating, argumentation, uh, you know, how biblical the, scripture. How did that, that work out for you guys? Well, the, that, that Dao team, which started very really strongly, good, I remember six, seven brothers. I was always a young guy. Uh, the, the brothers are always five, six years ahead of me. And these brothers, mashallah, you know, they, they, had, they were born and bred in the in UK. And uh, they had left, led a life of you know, complete ignorance, complete way of Islam. Allah guided them. They were like, some of these were drug dealers, like big yeah. dealers, bro. In fact, here's a, here's a really funny story for you. When they left the Jahaliyyah and two, three brothers, they started practicing on. They were big dealers in the Southeast, right? They were known. I remember once we were doing a Dao stall and one of the brothers' name is Ra, right? Ra, R-A, Ra. And he is giving Dao and then one couple of guys come, Ra! What's that in? It's Crawley, it's Cockney, right? What's that in, Ra? And, and Ra will go, oh yeah, yeah, and, and I go, yeah, bro, listen, can you sort me out? I need, to, it's been some, well, I, can, you, can I have a word? Like, I go, no, no, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> so, 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 so the guy wanted to have a, he wanted to buy some drugs off of yeah. the brother. Yeah. So he said, no, no, I'm, I don't do that anymore. He goes, what do you mean you don't do that anymore? And then you take him to the side, and go, look, I'm, 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 he goes, what's with the beard and stuff? So, you know, so while yeah. I, it's, it's a whole thing. So I was watching that, I made it one last. So, um, so, so what, 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 what I'm trying, what I want to know is like, how did it work out for the Dao with this harshness? Like, were loads of people coming to Islam? Well, that or team it? doesn't exist anymore. In that town, I'm not trying to act superior. May Allah, you know, save me from that kind of thinking. But there's no Dao happening there. Uh, I'll be happy if others carried on the stall. Yeah. There's absolutely nothing happening. There's the masjid. Yeah. They have some classes. Yeah. So you're the sole survivor. He is the only No, survivor. I'm not going to say that I'm so sorry because, you know, I, no, I, but, I, I, I but bro, don't, you, there is, I mean, don't yeah. you think that happens everywhere? Like, even now? Like, if something starts, yeah, like, yeah. last year, it'll be finished by now. Do you think that's, like, a trend that goes it on? It is a trend. And that, that also is, uh, it connects with what you said about brothers who were in the dawah, either burn out or they leave. Like, I'm 44 now. And a lot of brothers in their 40s, you won't see many still doing street that there are some much amazing gems out there who are not on social media who are doing it day in day out I, you know even Sabu was sitting out of brothers doing stores here and there you know in different parts of london so there are but there's very few people now, then like in crawley bro we we had forced four to five stores at one point four to and That's one wild. day four to five stores with four in crawley town center uh, uh, four or five brothers in each table so oh. we're talking about a team of 20, 25 brothers right this is what back in the 90s this is 90 this is 95 96 97 yeah Okay, so let me ask you this then, bro. Let's take a moment. I want you to juxtapose. I want you to compare. You gave us pros and cons of the Dao in the yeah. 90s. Give us the pros and cons of the Dao today. Because you're heavily involved yeah. once again yeah. today. So, 
Give us what are the pros and cons of today and how does it compare to the Dow of the 90s? So, cons, according to me, and I could be wrong, it's a, it's a discussion, but I would say there's a lot of emphasis on uh, argumentation, that you need to just always argue your point. There's n there's no such thing as discussion. So when I when I interact with uh, young brothers and sisters by social media who want to get involved now, because my I, my whole my uh, particular passion now, my particular objectives is I want to I want to motivate people to get involved now because mm -hmm. I see people leaving it and you know uh, and people going to other things, but I want to motivate people. Hence the how motivation, right? Yeah. So when I do that, people ask me I want to get involved. When I ask them a simple question like Okay, so you know, just simple interview questions. So what kind? What do you mean by dawa? What kind of dawa are you involved in? And what, why? You know, and it's always the same thing. I've seen these debates. I've seen these arguments. I've seen how they smash the word smash. Mm. I've seen how they destroy Christians, atheists. I want to do that. I see how these brothers wipe their floor. Cancel culture. This is the first mm. reference point. It's not because Allah SWT says in the Quran that when you when you get involved in dawah, a dawah gives you life, respond to the call of Allah. It's not that. It's always this. It's always I want to destroy, I want to smash, I want to show these you know, Christians. That's the thing. So that's the, the, the cons at the moment. And uh, just to follow on that yeah. as well, that promoting yourself, self-promotion, self anger, you know, uh, Self amazement, subhanAllah. So that's the harshness. The, 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 the good side, I want to give you obviously positive as well, yeah. is that I think because, mashallah, with again, IRA training, uh, because of some of the brothers, mashallah, that I learned, uh, uh, because we didn't have training, uh, uh, when you have proper training, mashallah, which is done according to Quran and Sunnah, which is done with shura, with various experts, that there's compassion, there's warmth, there's invitation. You're inviting to Allah. And I think this is something I've discussed with you as well recently, that we need to talk about Allah more. Yeah. When you tell people, people want to know about Allah, His names and attributes. Yeah. Just talking about that. that you don't, I, I had a discussion with a young, young brother who's been in the store recently and he's mashallah growing now. He just couldn't fathom that fact that no, you have to refute Christianity and then talk about Allah. I, know, I, go, I talk about Allah and I've not have to refute anything. It is part of Islam, of course, in the shahada, negation, but not every single time. Generally, I feel, and this is something I'm really passionate about, and you know this, that we need to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. So we need to talk so about we're how I want to move, but worship. before yeah. we move on to, to that point, bro, I think let's explore uh, Imran, this. Imran, I've got a quick question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Can I ask it? Um, For do, Imran or me? Do, do, do people okay. call you DM? DM? Danger Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> now motivation. No, no, that's, no, how, bro, that's how I introduced him to bro, me. Bro, you know, yeah, got middle name is Dao Motivation. You know, yeah. uh, with me, right? I, I struggle with Dao stalls even now. It's, I, and I find it the most that. Yeah. awkward and difficult form of that. But uh, you know, I, if someone starts a conversation like Imran, if yeah. he starts speaking to someone, I join in, no problem. Inshallah, yeah. sometimes I've also got shahadas, very, very, very few shahadas, sure. right? But that's fine. But I find it very difficult to speak to people on Dao stall, let alone stop them and engage with them, right? Yeah. You, bro, back in the days, right, you used to be that annoying person who walks around with a bucket, right, and stops people on the high street. Street right? fundraising, yeah, street but, fundraising. Uh, because you just don't want to be stopped by them. That's that's what you would do before, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you've got experience yeah, that's, in that. When I wasn't in the Dawah, that's what I was doing. Because that 19 so years, that's your background, street basically. fundraising, yeah, yeah. How, how, much did that, how much did that help you with stopping people? Ma massively, bro. We've seen examples of massively. this. Maybe we yeah. can play something. Yeah, you, so from. you know, when you see like a non-Muslim walking like on the high street, right, you have, do you have any hesitation or fear of stopping them? No inhibitions, it, alhamdulillah, nothing. It's, it's, it's like, like drinking water, like you just pick up the glass and drink <laughs> it. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. Bro, I, I always tell people that's where I'm most, that's my comfort zone. Yeah. That is where I'm most like expressive of, of myself. So uh, how can people develop that? Well, the thing is, I've, uh, as I was saying to the brothers, sometimes that freaks people out. So when, when someone's freaks, not involved, in, most people when, out, when you're not involved in when, you, when you've never done street dawah, and especially in London, especially in Oxford Street and Leicester mm. Square, right? It can be daunting. That may not be the best because, oh, I have to do that. I have to be cheeky. I have to have banter. I have to, uh, and I, you have to say no. no that's, just, that's just showing that this is also an aspect. You can do it. If you are naturally cheeky at home, if you're naturally out, uh, an extrovert amongst your fam family and friends, then bring that onto the streets. Be mm. genuine, be yourself. Don't be robotic. Like, okay, I have to like change, transform into something else, right? I have to turn into a mujtahid stroke philosopher in one. Optimus right? Prime. Yeah, Optimus Prime, Optimus yeah. Prime. <laughs> it's like a transform. So, the, uh, that's, so I, I, I'm very selective in who I show that video now yeah. because it does freak some people. Yeah. Some people get martial arts like, oh, wow. I, I, think, I think the biggest barrier, yeah. uh, this is true, I think is rejection. 
Like you yes. just don't want to be rejected yeah, by someone. Yeah. That's so true. Because uh, so so how do you overcome that? For you, what is it? For, the, for you, so for for a normal person, rejection means, mm. oh man, I spoke to this guy now he doesn't like me. People are looking at me. For you, what does rejection mean? Well, for that you have to attend one of my courses. No, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but I think some of the points which I've alhamdulillah put this into a blog form because you know there's a lot happening in the dawa and you get busy, but sometimes Allah gives you the. Uh, opportunity to write things down and pen things down. So one of the things I would advise that, uh, and this is how I approach it, is expect it. Like when you go out in the streets, uh, if it is street dawah, remember street dawah is just one way, there's many other ways, but if it was street dawah, be, be prepared for rejection. It is part of the game. Don't think, oh, that guy didn't even look at me. Mm. Like that person didn't even acknowledge my existence. And people, you know, they go, oh my God, like I can't take it. And that, you're right, that is the one thing that comes up again and again. So expect it. So when you expect it, that lessens the blow. Um, there's other things you can do, for example, like, uh, you know, w when people say no, I make it into like a line, like a banter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for example, I mean, this, this may come across as really cheeky, mm -hmm. but just to give you an example, it may not work now. It's one of those things that any work in a bar and not bar, although we don't go to bars, but anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone says, if I say, can you stop? Let's do a role play. Well, if I said you could go and try, well, start you you got to say I got to catch a so bus. So I'm walking by. You're you in a rush. You're in a rush and catch a bus. Yeah, I'm walking. So I'm walking. you got you say to me catch a bus. So, uh, hey there, how you doing, fella? You're right. How's yeah, life? Yeah, sorry, Listen, um, can you I, need, I need to catch a bus quickly. No, just ten seconds. No, no, I'm getting late. I'm getting late. Why you got to catch the bus? Okay, but how are you gonna catch a bus? They're really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's and there's another one where so if I say to you. Uh, how you doing, fella? With the really cool glasses. Uh, can you stop for ten seconds? You're saying no, I'm in a rush, so you say that. So I'm in a rush. Yeah. Uh, and just keep saying I'm. I'm, I'm in a rush. I'm in a rush. I'm, I'm rushing. Okay. Give me a loan. I'm in a rush. Are you rushing? Yeah, I'm rushing. But you look English to me. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so, so basically, you need to. I make okay. lines out of what they uh, say. Okay, you need to learn dad jokes. Yeah, basically, okay. and be and be quick at Somebody thinking on the spot. <laughs> Okay. But so that so you, you know, initiation is one of those things, bro. Loads of people struggle with. Like yeah. I'm the same. My biggest problem on a dial table is stopping people. Yeah. Once this conversation starts, I'm fine. Yeah. But just the initial stopping the person and loads of and people that's suffer a, that's from the, this, bro. That's bro, the, bro, the bit I enjoy. It's the most difficult. Thing. Yeah, that's, that's the bit I enjoy. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> oh, so you don't enjoy the actual dial in Shahada? <laughs> no, I'm not worried about that. That's that's yeah. <laughs> so if people do want to learn more on initiation, where can they go? Sort of your thoughts. Yeah. So uh, Alhamdulillah, I've, I've got it in my blog uh, as well. Um, so they can read it if they want. There's videos on it as well on the YouTube channel. So, but and I'm doing different training as well now and again, inshallah. So inshallah. yeah, alhamdulillah. So okay, alhamdulillah. So bro, let me take you back. Yeah, I, I want to sort of really pick your brains on the whole dawa downfalls today. Mm. Yeah, because you mentioned you briefly mentioned earlier about social media. Yeah. You mentioned the algorithm. I'm assuming YouTube algorithm and yeah. social media algorithms, etc. You also mentioned that there's, we have access to scholars today, we have yeah. access to knowledge today, but do you believe that du'at, people involved in the da'wah aren't concerned with knowledge or aren't focusing on knowledge or how else can I put it? They're not really, they don't see the, this, the value of it in the da'wah. Do you think there is a problem there or what's your, what's your take on that? Because why are these mm. problems arising then, right? Is it just that they're, they're seeking knowledge but just the way, the nature of social media, yeah. it just it wraps people up? Well, what's going on? There needs to be some sort of grounding, bro. Look, if, if I'm really honest, because you know we need to be as honest as possible, I'm not the best example of seeking knowledge, something which I'm struggling with, but, but I do want it. You know, I think me and you've discussed it as well many times, that the need to study the Qur'an more. Uh, alhamdulillah, we've done the da'wah training, we've learned da'wah tips, we've learned street da'wah, we've gone out there, but how much ilm are we doing? How much are we building ourselves? And how much is the da'wah Qur'anic, which is a big like hole, right? So... Uh, what do you mean all, by that? Is the Dawah Quranic? Well, because we need to. So there's many ways of looking at it. Number one, we should, if we're going to be in the Dawah seriously, that we need to improve our own relationship with the Quran. We need to maybe study the Quran more, which is Tafsir, Tadabur, uh, and, and all that. And also in the Dawah itself, literally practically, like for example, holding the Quran and reciting verses of the Quran, opening up, just like other uh, people of other religions do. So on the Dawah stalls, have the Quran with you, uh, Mus'haf or the Quranly app. Hey, so you know you can have that open it up use it you know um, and recite the verses of the Quran the Wahi to people so uh, you, don't see, you don't see much of that happening? I don't see and I think there needs to be a massive improvement within myself and everyone else so when the, the knowledge it grounds you the knowledge humbles you when I went to Pakistan uh, so Alhamdulillah again I'm really when I reflect upon it and I'm talking to you about this and you don't 
get a chance to talk about this and reflect it. But subhanAllah, when you, you just can't help but say subhanAllah that when I went to Pakistan, I, Allah put me in touch with scholars for the first time in my life. Mm. You used to hear the name scholar when you're in Crawley, you, and, and there were a few in London, but because I'm living in a town, it's about an hour away. So now I'm in Islamabad, and they're actually bona fide, qualified scholars who've done eight years, 10 years, 15 years of learning, right? Texts, Quran, Sunnah, tradition, uh, Mufassirs, you know, Muhaddith. So when I sat with these scholars, and you know, it's people like Dr. Fazal Allahi, uh, who's the Sheikh of Rajazia, uh, Dr. Suhail Hassan, who's the brother of Shweb. So, you know, mashallah, we have all these ulama, qualified schol scholars. You really understand, okay, this is real knowledge. And then you understand for things like disease of the heart. You actually understand it a bit more now. You understand that, you know, the dawah, if, if you are, if you're always giving dawah and not seeking knowledge, and that's going to, you know, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring out weaknesses within you, within your dawah and within your own Do you think the partner. opposite is the case too? Meaning that there are the, the brothers and sisters seeking knowledge. Yes. Are not. Yeah. Involved in the dawah to yeah. the level they should be. There are there are way too many brothers, and this may come across really strange, but they're they're seeking knowledge, mashallah. But are they sharing that knowledge enough? Are they sharing with the people that need it? Are they really connecting with the youth or the non-Muslims that actually? That, I always say that non-Muslims, uh, and this is another point of rejection as well. By the way, when I looked mm. at non-Muslims, they may look as if they are busy. They may look as if they go to shopping. Or on a date in Leicester Square, or go you know casino, whatever. Which they, I give Leicester Square because it's a very prominent area. We don't a lot of dawah there. They may look and they may show through their body language they're busy, but really they're looking for Islam. That's the way I look at it. Mm. They're looking. They're waiting for someone to approach them. So you know that, uh, that's how I overcome. So the it's the brothers and sisters who are seeking knowledge, and there's many, mashallah. Uh, they need to start open. They need to start sharing what they learn. Yeah. That's what it is. Just say what you learn. And a bit of Dao training and talk, and mm. they can be amazing to us. So, so let me ask you this. How do you balance the aspects of social media? And you know, you've mentioned the, the dangers of social media. Yeah. And doing your Dao work on social media. How do you balance that? Sphere? Look, uh, I think it's ex extremely hard. I, I, I don't think I or anyone can say, yeah, you know, I've got the balance. Uh, you know, I've got it just right. It is really hard. Um... Like for me, if I leave the dawah and the dawah is and social media is a necessary tool now, you can't avoid it. If I leave the dawah, I fear I will get dawah and I fear I become lazy, not just in dawah, but in my Islam, we become lazy, in my ibadah become lazy. That's the way I look at it. So I need that connection. I, so social media gives that connection. Um, I, things like, you know, some brothers advise, and I'm not, I'm not saying I do this every single time, but some of the brothers advise that when you, before you make a video, let's say, you pray to nafal or you do some sort of dua or some sort of go for a walk or something and say may Allah please accept this please may Allah don't make this video as a form of making me promote myself and love myself and self amazement make this a means to guide people mm. so that I can get rewarded in the akhirah so yeah. you need to really so either go for a walk do some sort of prayers some du'as before each video mm. I think it's really but critical. you think it's important to do the videos isn't I it? think it's critical critical <coughs> a, a blog a video a post yeah um, so, so like today I did a post about uh, free mixing in uh, Instagram DMs. Mm. It's a big fit now, bro. It's a you know we have to communicate with each other. Yeah. Uh, but Subhanallah, the, the temptations there. Even though if you're married or not, uh, you, the temptations, the fitnas there. So I before I did the post, I thought about it, should I do or not, I, and that struggle, that you know should I should I, that's good. I yeah. think that's yeah. healthy. No, you you mentioned actually a very interesting point, which is, you know, it's something simple. Yeah. Not easy. It's something we should really do, which is be conscious. Yeah. And just take a couple of minutes yes. before you do a particular action you think you're doing in the da'wah. Yeah. Because I think a lot of times, some of the crazy stuff we see, you know, under the umbrella of da'wah online on social yeah. media, I think it happens because we, we don't take a moment to reflect over yeah. what we're doing. And don't yeah. think of the consequences. Because I say, look, in a way, du'a should be consequentialist, right? Yeah, right. Meaning, think of <laughs> the... when it's allowed, right? Think, yeah, think of the consequences of yeah. what you're about to do. Yeah. 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 And again, it's 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 easier said than done. Yeah. But really take a few minutes. You want to do a video, yeah. you yeah. think people will benefit. Okay, take a minute. Yeah. Is it needed? Yes. Right? What are the effects of this video? What's the effect it's going to have on the impression of dawah? Yeah. What's the effect it's going to have on the non-Muslims that watch this video? Yes. You know, we I don't think we think these if things... I, like, if I don't produce it, is it the end of the world? Yeah. You know, because yeah. you know, we're so... It's that, oh, if I, if I don't make a video every week, then I might lose my followers and, you know, people might forget me easily. 
So what? That's so you think well, people are afraid to be forgotten? Yeah. He feared the fear of being unknown, and uh, you know. What do you think about that, Isa? The fear yeah, of being unknown. Yeah, <clears throat> I think um, I think there's a obviously you're making a good point, and I agree with a lot of it. But there's also but there's a but. Yeah, there's a, there's a big but, right? If if somebody has a genuine, sincere intention that yeah. his YouTube channel, this platform, is going to help him get more reward and spread something. Right, and it means making good videos and getting it shared and stuff means more people will follow them. Same with the charities, more followers, more donors. It's yeah. the same thing, right? Uh, some organization that we discussed yeah. today, getting yeah. a big social media following. And what did that result in? More donations? So yeah. they could do more of their work, right? So obviously there's a fine line. We should always be careful, but uh, it can be that. Imagine you have like an Islamic organization, right? A mother or something They're doing really well And it runs because You're running your YouTube channel You make mm. good Islamic videos And stuff Now If you don't upload You're going to think that If I don't upload My channel's going to die yeah. And the funds for this Madrasa will die Yeah This is not always the case I get the, the theme's point And yeah. I agree Some people They don't do it for that reason I, I'm more in, Yeah, yeah. In, I, I say I'm, I'm coming from the point of view Where 16 to 17 year olds Want to get involved in Dawah mm. And then I, I First of all I admire the passion Alhamdulillah It has to be admired Well done that yeah. you want to do this rather than becoming a singer or you know entertainer or whatever alhamdulillah yeah. but the thing is now you need to uh think about it straight away they want a hundred thousand like I, I now i've seen some instagram accounts where they put in their their name billion followers that's their target they, i've seen it uh, you've told me some funny stories i, don't know, I wouldn't take someone like that seriously yeah. but at all but well, that's, the, that's the share with us tell us that you know you've had some experiences with some brothers that have contacted you saying they want to be involved in that and you ask them well why like I want to be a superstar, yeah. I want to be a superstar speaker. They, they say it. Nah, bro, uh, this must be kids, <laughs> man. I, I, it I, has I, to be I, kids. I want to. Be, they'll they'll say certain speakers' names. Yeah. I want to become like him. I want to be like him, and uh, you know they they imply that you know. Uh, okay, they won't say that because people uh, uh, people love them, and I want to be loved. They don't say that. Yeah, but. But you have to be careful what you want. <laughs> so, but what would you say to some like like I've had recent experiences like that. It was actually a sister who said something very similar, like, you know, asked her, what, what, what is yeah. it? Why do you want to be involved in the Dao? I want, yeah. And she was like, you know, she mentioned some really <laughs> famous speakers. She said, yeah, that's cool. I want to be like that. Yeah, you know, I'm, yeah. I want. That's a good. But these must be kids. That's a good career. These must be kids. Yeah, they are. Right? They, they are young. Yeah, but there's a lot of them now. Okay, but here's the here's thing. the issue now. Yeah, I want to get yeah. both of your thoughts on this. Yeah, you got a 16 or 70 year old. Yeah, that's hum, alhamdulillah wants to come on the dean. Wants to do something for the dean. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you tell them and they they turn around and say to you, "Oh, I want to be." A popular speaker you know they give you the yeah, the, yeah. the standard okay yeah. no go I want like, this yeah. many followers yeah on, you say yeah. they say that to you how do you deal with that person now because on one end you don't want them to mm. you don't want to yeah, offend them when they leave and go yeah. go become yeah, but, a, a, a rock star or something yeah personally I think you know you just tell them no I'm right because you're going to start them off in doing it just for the fame and the followers yeah, and yeah. stuff right and I think a lot of people even us right you look back when you were a kid you think well, what, what things did I do right growing up and stuff like even in your 20s right when you get to your 30s you you look back and think you know how you could have done, done things better so I would I think it's important to tell them there and then that look brother this is the wrong way yeah, to go about yeah. it right you don't do because we can't say oh Allah says about sincerity and intention and Mela makes all sincere I mean we all struggle I mean, with it right I mean. but you can't say that that there's such big warnings like the first person to or oh, some of the first few people to go to Jahannam will be you know the, the yeah, person the hadith, who yeah. fought for the sake of Allah and then uh, someone who learned the Quran but it wasn't for the sake of Allah yeah. right yeah. we can't say okay yeah forget that no no we don't want to demotivate you yeah that sounds good we guide them in the right direction give yes. them good advice and stuff like that obviously with good manners but like and that goes back to your point that you said in the 90s being too harsh with people yeah, yeah, if yeah. you tell him what you're talking about yeah. how dare you you're doing this not doing, you have to do it in a good way right you have to, yes do it like you you'd say to your son yeah. or your nephew or niece right this is the thing bro you know people make refutations of people and everything if it was their own brother yeah. Or someone in their family who did something, they would <laughs> never that. do that. Yeah, Even yeah, if it was public, yeah. they wouldn't say, "Oh, brother," but it's public. No, they would do it. Approach them, try and talk to them, do it in the best possible way. 
Yeah. But now this is the thing. You're right. Is do do they do it for the algorithm? Yeah, these are uh, refutations and correcting people and stuff. Mm. Or do they do they actually do it? Because I've seen some people's personalities like change through these like refutations and stuff. Like they'll do a refutation to fit their personality that they've built online. So when they get corrected, they'll suddenly be like, Oh no no no! I didn't say yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. say that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's it's uh, these are big big you challenges. Know, you know the people. I've actually got a process now. So when they are asked they want to become a daddy, or if they say they want to become a motivational speaker, or something, when they hint it, I always send them three, four blogs which talks about intention, sincerity, ikhlas. So read this first. Yeah. And then we, we made a few uh, videos in the Dawah Hour where we talk about followers and followership, and we made a clips out of, that, out of that as well. And we warned about, you know, that, you know, you may, have, you may start with a good intention, but down very soon you're going to be start, you know, doing this for likes and not for Allah. Yeah. And you can be followers. Bro. So I'd send those videos and then, <laughs> then I send them tips on how to improve your quality of videos and stuff. Mm. So I balance. So on the one hand, get you in sincerity. So it's three, four videos. And then I send two videos of how to be, how to Ehsan. Because in Islam, we do things with Ehsan. Mm. Yeah. So if you are going to do stuff, and of course, again, I need to, uh, you know, uh, do what I'm preaching. Like my quality videos is, is rubbish. As you're always, you're about always improving. Yeah, I'm trying. So, I'm trying yeah. to improve. Trying to improve my app the angle. I've got a tripod now. I'm yeah. like, <laughs> got that. Takbir. Yeah. Inshallah. Wait. May Allah bless him. Some no. of his videos. Yeah, bro. lighting. So like literally, he's he's yeah. facing away from the window. The window's <laughs> no, it's not like that. Sun outside, and he's like a silhouette. <laughs> yeah. bro, bro, look. What, what I say to people: as long as you're doing it, brilliant. Yeah, Keep going, exactly. right? Yeah. You know, I saw a video from Will Smith today, and it's actually it was actually a really good point about what we're discussing. Right. He said, you know, I'm. I always walk and I'm outside and sometimes I say, hey, hey, Will Smith, Will Smith, I want to be just like you, I want to be a big actor like you one day, right? He said those people most likely will never ever become big actors. Wow. You know why? He says basically that if they would want to be, they'd already already be doing it. Yeah. So even when someone messaged you, I want to be da, da e, yeah. do dawah and yeah. stuff, yeah. They, were, they, they should already be in the da'wah, right? Yeah. They can do that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with messaging you, asking you for advice, yeah. but a lot of them should already be in there because what is da'wah? You tell non-Muslims about Islam, right? And um, and so this is very important. Like sometimes mm. I see people comment on uh, Ayra videos and this is actually a message to them, by the way. They say, how do I get involved in Ayra? Yeah. How do I contact Ayra? Ayra? Ayra yeah. How do I contact Ayra? Can you guys not Google I E R A? Yeah. Go on the website and click contact or write Ira well, email. If, they, if they're emailing you already, then they're already in contact <laughs> with you technically. I used yeah. to say, I used to say uh, okay, so which flight into Heathrow are you, are you taking? And yeah. This, and this is a guy from Pacific or in India or Pakistan in a town. Yeah, which flight to Heathrow? What's Heathrow got with Ira? <laughs> yeah, but 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 this this is yeah. the thing, right? Uh, I mean, if th and it goes back to his point, he's like, if you really want to be a dai or yeah. you really want to be an actor, already, you'd be in acting school, yes. you'd be doing stuff. Very good. Yeah, point. and this really but now as well, it's yes. like it's quite simple. If you ask Nadim, saying, "Look, Nadim, I live in Pakistan, I live here, we can't really do dawah here," what would you suggest? That's a different story. Yeah. Yeah. But when someone says, "I, I want to do that, I want to get involved in the dawah." There has to be an intrinsic motivation yes, that you yes. should have and you'd be doing it already. You understand? Well, on motivation as well, just one last point yes, as well. Yes. Is I've got brother and this is absolutely this happened recently years before. I've got brothers who say I want to join Dawah. And when I look at their uh, pictures, recent not a few years ago, recent pictures, like a day old, they're playing a guitar. Mm. And they want to join the Dawah. <laughs> but, right? And they're doing, you know, and uh, as you know, some uh, unfortunately we live in an age where the people are making bolder pictures with their, you know, with their girlfriends, their boyfriends, yeah. you know, open sins, bro. Yeah. So you got open sins pictures two days ago, you know, one day, you know, you can see the time, right? one day ago, 18 yeah. hours ago, not three years ago, four years ago, they were chain given, and then you said, I want to join Dawah, yeah. I want to learn the debates. So, wow, so, yeah. so as you just, refu as you just yeah. refuted them. And you spoke about refutations a few minutes ago. I want to ask you about refutation. Well, refutation is advice. No, I mean, well, look, no, I'm just trying. I'm just a bit of rhetoric, bro. Just, <laughs> just to clarify, like obviously, yeah, what Nadim is saying is that, of course, anybody can change any time. You know, Ramadan, yeah. you see a lot of yeah, people yeah. who drink alcohol, do all of this stuff. They change, right? So. Of course, Nadim will still reply to them and stuff, but he's yeah. saying don't, yeah, yeah, of course. don't try and yeah. live that double life, right? Yeah, Where you're, exactly. you're a guitarist, you're this, that, and you're doing that at the same time, right? If, if you're not working can, yourself... Yeah, we're not saying yeah, that, yeah. listen, if you have a guitar, you did something two days ago, don't speak to anyone or don't get involved in that, of yeah, course yeah. not. But it's the principle of living this kind of life. Of course. You're where to, Islam you're is not... Preach becomes a part of your life it's like a, another hobby yeah, yeah do you yeah, understand or yeah. because everybody else is doing it you know but I think let, let's on um, there's two 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 things i want to ask you before we wrap up 
is this you know one thing you can say which is common between the 90s dawa and today's dawa is yeah. the refutation culture is still there yeah. right that's true now yeah. what's your take on the whole refutation culture within the dawa sphere because i know it's there within the islamic sphere generally i mean online and on youtube yeah but let's just stick to the dawa what's your take on Look, the whole refutation culture bro, uh it, it's i'm not going to say it's not needed mm-hmm. It is needed when, for example, look when we talk about atheism, atheists, we do uh, refute that. Okay, but I'm talking about inter, oh, Mus- inter-Muslim. inter-Muslim. Yeah, yeah. Again, inter-Muslim. Look, we follow the Sunnah. We don't th- we don't do things out of whims and desires, right? And the Sunnah is that uh, only qualified scholars who know the subject in and out, right? Uh, they understand the hikmah, they, uh, and it should be done by people who, again, wisdom, experience. You know, I'm not going to give it age, but someone been around for a long time yeah. who've interacted with people. It needs to be done with empathy. There needs to be an empathy. Are you refuting for the sake of getting more views and becoming popular and them coming to your channel, not going there? Come to my channel, come to my team. Or are you doing it because you really want to do it for the benefit of that person and the ummah? Yeah, but this is where my little gripe is here. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to put it out there and get your thoughts on it. And Issa, chime in as well, bro. Is when you put your dawah hat on, yeah, when you think from a Dawah perspective, you know that there's non-Muslims looking in to yeah. the content you're producing. Yeah. And therefore, they're inevitably going to come across your refutation videos too because obviously they're going to be more popular. Yeah. suits the algorithm in a way. Yeah? yeah. So they're going to watch this stuff. Now, my thing is, if a non-Muslim is watching this and he's saying, oh, look, I want to know about, these people talk about the creator of the heavens and the earth. Yeah. right? I want to know about my creator. Oh, look, they're debating about something which from that perspective is quite trivial yeah. and they're making it public. Right? What impression is that going to have on that non-Muslim? Yeah. Right? That's yeah. my, my gripe with this whole thing. Right? Mm. What I'm saying, not that it's not needed, but maybe if you put your dawah hat on, it's yes. something you could do privately. Right? Yeah. Keep it off the social media if you're specifically focused, if you have that dawah mindset. Do you see what I'm saying? I've, I've always said, Imran, that the students of knowledge or brothers seeking knowledge who are actively seeking knowledge, much more than me and you and others, right? The, if they were to interact with the Muslim youth out there, in their cities, if they were to interact with non-Muslims on a daily level, yeah. online, street dawah, whatever, I think they'll understand, okay, you know what? What I'm, I'm just, you know, all this, uh, the last five years I've been making videos against this sect, this thought, this group, this person, right? But when I, now I'm interacting with these people, I've, there's a lot we need to do, subhanAllah. Yeah. The, the whole earth is crying out for Allah, right? The ummah is, needs Allah, the youth, Muslim youth, and talk about the people who are living, uh, living Islam, shubhat, and also non-Muslims. How many non-Muslims are there in the world? Yeah. How many non-Muslims are there in the world? Two-thirds of the world is yeah, Muslim. Yeah, we are saving souls by the permission of Allah in the Akhirah. So if, we, if we're focused on that, then the, the person who does, who's been in refutation, they go, you know what, SubhanAllah, what am I doing? Yeah. Like, th- where's the priority? Yeah. Uh, and the, the other thing about refutations as well, I've, I've seen in, in Pakistan here, it hardens the heart. It really does harden the heart. So you need to, you know, uh, if you're going to refute, I think, and, and this is my take on it, you need to think about the subject to, uh, right, wholeheartedly, consult with multiple scholars, do it out of hikmah first, uh, talk to them privately, the other Muslim, you do all these things. Then, if you think that he's not listening and there's a need and there's a benefit of the ummah, then maybe do it. But again, like I said, if, you, if you're involved in dawah, which is a problem, with the issues you're not involved in active, everyday dawah with the masses yeah. and then of course you're not going to have empathy and natural empathy will grow when you see subhanAllah people are dying out they, they, people are dying to know the truth mm. they're, they're literally there's you know mental what's happening in society there's mental health uh, depression with COVID and before COVID it's crazy out there they, people need Islam they're crying yeah. out so why are we I mean, we have mashallah so many brothers and sisters who've got amazing knowledge I, I always say they're much more uh, knowledgeable than me much more articulate than me much more, they've got so many skills. There's so many amazing brothers and sisters in UK, Europe, but they're just too much focus on, oh, I need to attack that group. I need to put that, I need a reaction video here. I need to, you know, uh, expose this person. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. But yeah, that's just Any my thoughts? take Pardon. on that. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, when people see infighting, yeah. uh, it, it, it's not good. But I, I, I got a different point, right, that I wanted to bring up before I forget. Yeah. I think videos of street dawah do more dawah now than the actual street dawah itself. Okay. What do you mean? When people record street dawah conversations yeah, and yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. Really those are. get like 100, 200, 300, 400,000 views and you're not going to speak to 100,000 people on that yes. story, yeah. right? Which is quite an interesting uh, phenomenon that brings on me on to another topic, right? You know, they're saying that uh, 
a, a big thing that's going to start happening now is uh, rockets, right? They're going to start using rockets. They're saying that they might start... Uh, <laughs> what are you talking what about? What do you mean rockets? Yeah, uh, let me explain. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me, let me finish. This is a they're physics lesson. That, uh, they start using rockets in the they, Dawah. They, so. They're going to do global delivery with rockets. Uh, or they're working you on... You mean drones? Uh, no, rockets. Actual rockets. You know the one Tesla, SpaceX, all of this oh. stuff? They're saying that through rockets, they're going to do delivery anywhere in the world in an hour. Oh, right? So they're working towards that. So the world will change in the rockets and travel space, right? But in the Dawa space, how do you guys think it's going to evolve now? Uh, starting from like the 90s mm. uh, to now. I, 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 I think there's going to be like a big, big change. I think especially with the online YouTube. And you know these, these Street Dawa videos, right? Just read the comments, see how many shahadas there are. I, I mean, this yeah. is something you'll see, I've not been, listen, yeah. you'll see like a clean-shaven, white, old Texan, right? Commenting fully, defending the Dai and everything, and just because they're just so confident, they just—it's yeah. the thing. So there's definitely a place for these kind of debates on the yeah. street that, that, that you might have with Christian preachers and stuff, but it's actually helping a lot uh, to give mm-hmm. Dawah to others. And uh, so that, I think that's huge. But where do you guys think it will be? Let's say in 2030. So I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. Get your take on it first. I I, th- I think it 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 may in the if I look at UK. Uh, we've always or, always agreed that street dawah is not as popular as it used to be, um, for various reasons. Yeah, people are online now, but I think maybe what one thing could happen in the future, it, the dawah may take off in different countries, right? It it could be even Europe because uh, you know uh, Europe, uh, like for some some countries, f- you can't give open dawah for some reason. It's a b- very autocratic or whatever. There's some policies, but maybe things change. Maybe, maybe things will be you know more active there. Maybe in the east, like for example, Pakistan and India, you know these sort of places. Maybe in for example, Far East, Dawa may be more uh, popular there. But um, yeah, I think more and more Muslims. I think more and more they're going to be definitely online. There's going to be much much more channels. I think every single maybe channel will become a normal thing. Have you been on the OR chat? The what? The the IRA the one reason chat no, no, that we no, do. No, he isn't. No. But yeah, I mean that I, I think that is what where the DAO is evolving. That's so people huge. would people type for in, me. If, yeah. yeah, for me it's massive because like chat, you, chat, we run chat, ads yeah. basically for about Islam to non-Muslims. So not only will you not stop someone in the street who doesn't want to be stopped, or you're just checking if they're gonna stop or not, right? But when they message you, it's you know the ones who have messaged you, they actively want to speak. The ones who weren't interested just scrolled past. And we have what a, what a thousand chats a day sometimes, yeah, right? Okay. Uh, chats right about Islam Mashallah. with people. And we have shahadas every month. Some months we've had like three hundred shahadas. Wow. So that's a Brilliant. huge one, I think, yeah. that you catch people online, right, with interesting things. And I think that that's a huge one. Yeah, uh, I, I sort of agree. I think with Isa, I think the grassroots stuff which is happening offline, off the internet, is going to really pick up. And really, there's going to be some amazing stuff that happens. And really, some of these projects, like the OR chat's amazing, mashallah. Mm. We're also planning another sort of live call, a uh, call-in type of uh, thing with new non-Muslims interested in Islam. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I'm, I've got mixed feelings about the, the YouTube, the social media dawah. Mm. A part of me thinks it's going, we're heading towards a crunch. Yeah. It's just going to collapse in on, its, yeah. on, its, in on yeah. itself yeah, at a point. But another part of me thinks maybe it's just going to... Evolve into something yeah. else, bro. We don't I, know. I, I'll be See? honest with you. Yeah. I, I think it, it is impossible for it to ever collapse. Impossible. Mm. I'll but, tell you why. What, because what, what shape it will be in in another five years? I'll tell you why. You know, the, that, the, why, why, why it's impossible for it to collapse is because it's impossible for food videos to just collapse, right? Because people, <laughs> humans always eat, yeah. right? Yeah. Same thing when someone has like an existential crisis or something or they start thinking about death mm. or life. That's just a natural thing. Yeah. X amount of people will start to think about death today. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow, everyone's on their journey, right? And that will lead them to searching and watching these videos. So I don't think it'll ever go. But you're right. Yeah. Maybe the the the, the, the quality virality of the or something. Yeah. it will go down. I, I think it'll go up before it comes no, down. Spirit, spirituality is definitely on the increase. Yeah, but yeah. but not from the like you get all of these new age spiritual leaders yeah. and gurus. They're massive online today. Yeah. Right? Huge, you know. And people are moving with atheism. Like I did a search on this the other day. There was an article I read, and I checked it out myself on Google Trends. If you look at the trend of atheism searches, since 2005, it's been going down and the curve is like this. And it's at its lowest today. Like literally, when you compare the searches for Islam and atheism on Google, like Islam is here and atheism, you can't even see the line. It's so low, right? So it's, people are moving away from it. They're done, right? But they're moving towards alternative spiritualities, right? Where Islamic dawah on YouTube, how it's going to play a role, I think a lot of it's going to depend on the quality of it. Like the quality of the content. Being innovative. Meaning on how you uh, how you present, because there are loads of misconceptions non-Muslims have about Islam, 
right? Mm -hmm. So how you present it, and I think one thing that's going to be a key factor, bro, especially in the West, is going to be native revert brothers and sisters mm, being involved in yeah. the dawah. That's going to have a huge impact, yeah. inshallah. What, you know, if I'm still involved in dawah in 20 years' time... You, he's going to be the walk, two walking if, sticks. If if I have, be yeah, be, so 20 years, I'll be 64, yeah? Inshallah. inshallah. Subhanallah. Um, if I'm still involved, by the permission of Allah, if Allah accepts it, then I'm still, because I'm old school, I'm still going to call for old school interaction, physical face-to-face -face interaction. Yeah. Uh, I'm always going to call for because I'm not always been there. I always go think I always go against the grain. Not holograms, holographic type. No, of I'm always look. Uh, uh, you said if there's you know like you said you said you made a good point. If there's going to be food uh, demand for food, could people eat food right? If there's still city centres, if there's if there's still shopping, if there's still high streets, then people like myself and the brothers and sisters I'm trying to mentor because that's mm -hmm. one of my biggest passions is to develop the art the brothers and sisters around the world. I'm still going to encourage them. Like I went to Sheffield recently mm. and. The, uh, I would, when I spoke at street, because I when I speak at street dawah, I'm very careful because people are, generally are freaked out. General, generally people are freaked out street dawah. General rule, but then you get exceptions. When I was Sheffield, they actually loved it. They actually wanted to know more. They were curious about it. Mm. They could, sisters couldn't wait to go out and see you. So I was really happy. Someone from old school like that kind of thing. Yeah. So I guess there's you know even maybe it'll become more online. There'll be more channels and different technologies. Yes, but so people like myself, I'm still going to call for old school face to face. Street thou just because that's what the Prophet some did and that's the Sahaba right. did. Literally on the streets, there's actually a, a chapter by Dr. Fazal yeah. who gave a book, and I, Hamda, I, I translated the book, uh, the Street Dawah booklet, where he goes, you know, uh, Rasulullah some and the Sahaba doing Street Dawah and narrations on that. Mm. So they're literally on the streets, and there's actually one narration where Aisha said that the Prophet left, he just uh, he got up in the midnight and went on the streets and just warning people, right? So the Prophet some did it, the Sahaba did it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and, and I but the question yeah, arises right, if they had access yeah. to this technology. Yeah, if you find something more effective, I mean, bro, look, again, if face to face interaction will always happen. Yeah. But if you find something more effective, will you do it? I'm doing both. I'm but active good, online good, and face to face. We, we, uh, you know, uh, speaking yeah. about how the DAO will change, obviously, we've got this um, DAO bot that's about to come out. Oh, no. It's a, it's a AI. Chat. Oh, yeah, no. It's an AI <laughs> chat <laughs> bot we've built with different funnels and. Uh, Answers it goes into based on your answer to a question, oh right? So uh, with like gifts about, uh, and it's 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 really good on the but we haven't managed to get out yet because it's quite Thing technical. It, and what's really crazy in the DAO training, we got a pres one of the slides is about a robot. <laughs> Yeah. That human beings are not robots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see how that works. No, but, but the bot is yeah, yeah, not I know, I know, someone. Just, uh, just, uh, yeah. yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. of course. But but it's it's like, it's, you know. yeah. So this is not a human. So yeah. it's saying you, if, when you talk, don't be a robot. Yeah. Right? But this is no different to a website. You know, when yeah. they click and yeah. they get answering answers, questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's, it's quite interesting. It's yeah. funny with gifts. We're not treating human beings as robots. Yeah, but but the the point is that imagine if loads of people start coming into this website or follow like ten thousand a day looking into Islam. If we can find the right people through the targeting on. Uh, advertising, uh, the bot gives them dawah, right? Yeah, and the dawah, the, it's not so the people, bot. So we'll, we'll be is, no, the bot what? is not convincing them. Yeah. The bot is using the same hadith. We're gonna be our, says, then we're going to be our work, bro. <laughs> No, but will, there is follow up with someone, Finished. a person. Oh, of course, of yeah, yeah. yeah. They so can there's... call, they even send a voice message at the end with the shahada. So they, they can listen to it. That's, and that's scary for me. Freaky, bro. And because for me, dawah is life. Yeah, they can record it and send it back. But yeah, of course, there'll always be. Uh, a, a, a human interaction, yeah, face to face. Um, but yeah, I mean, the effectiveness of some of these other methods can be much, much yeah. greater. But on uh, the, I, the thing is, because I'm, I'm always, I agree, I agree with what backwards. you're saying about the Sahaba yeah. and the. You keep going with your walking sticks, bro. Yeah, I'm stop I, no, you. I, I can't help <laughs> it. He's gonna be like a crazy. No, but, but listen, one clarification: <laughs> the Prophet some example, that's right? Awesome. That's true, and they did it right. But yeah. they also traveled in camels, and you don't, you didn't come to the office in the camel today. Yeah. And not, you, were, you didn't come on the camera. But I'm not making that point to be anti of course, the new of course, style. Of course, I'm just giving an example that yeah, yeah, yeah. tradition, it, it needs to be alive as well. Like because, all the prophets, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. They, so all, they to, all give. We have to keep now. the tradition alive. So, so let me, let me, let's wrap up on this. Uh, one thing that will always remain, right, is is the, the messenger yeah. and the one that's receiving the message, right? Yes. Now, Therefore, the characteristics of the messenger will always remain. When yeah. I say messenger, people that deliver the message. The, the, the art, yeah, so what advice would you give young brothers and sisters looking to get involved in the dawah, the future of the dawah, in regards to their character, sincerity, whatever mm. else it is, maybe three pieces of advice you would give to them if they're looking to be involved in the dawah. Yeah, uh, so as we mentioned, uh, ikhlas is not something like uh, read a couple of hadith and that's it. I think if, if there are courses that you can join which talk about sincerity, about diseases of the heart, how to avoid them, uh, and you know, if you were to maybe uh, pick up 
quotes on the salaf, how what the salaf, what the pious predecessor talked about, fame. They actually talk about. They use the word English terms fame, how to avoid fame, how to uh, you know uh, how to avoid self promotion, that kind of thing. So that I think you need to do definitely some sort of course. Uh, either a video or read a book or something, but no more than more than just a quick five minutes. It has to be a good few hours, maybe a week, a good few weeks, whatever. So number one, work on sincerity. Work on your sincerity. Secondly, seek ilm, especially Quranic knowledge, as you go along with the dawah, and use that for yourself, and and use it in the dawah. Use Quranic verses more and more, right? Um, that's something, by the way. Just sorry to cut yeah, you. That's something sure. we actually do in our that, that new dawah training course, which is on training.ayo.org. I mean, every section, every slide has a Quranic reference. Alhamdulillah. You know, and we encourage the the, yeah. the, the, the the trainees to to learn those those ayat of the Quran. Yes. Uh, the third thing I, I would say is that because I'm someone who is constantly motivating people for da'wah, um, bring a bit of variation into your da'wah. Because I've seen, again, in the 90s, and that's one thing I've seen recently as well, and we've seen it as well, uh, we talk about London Olympics 2012, where all 500 brothers and sisters, yeah. and since then it's been going on the decline. People are interested in Dawah. People, mm. most people they attend the training, but they've not come to the actual Dawah. Um, so I think one, there's many reasons for that, but one of the reason is that you're doing the same thing, repetitive thing again. We're not, that's why we're not robots, right? We want to have variety too. I, I'm a big believer in variety. So, for example, um, if uh, if you're going to go out again using street dao or stall as an example let's say today you can use gurab but the next time you go just just memorize or read into allah's names and attributes and explain that to someone the third time you go next saturday uh talk about islamic spirituality or talk about the the heart the status of the heart in islam or the next time you go talk about the civilization there's so many about th things about islam as we say arguments are just a means that the, the fitra can be uncovered by various means and and of course so in all of this characteristics is extremely vital you've got to be you've got to have a warm way of of, of inviting islam uh, just just study the prophet sallallahu his character his nature mm. how he was just study that in depth right not just sira but you know maybe some of his biographies uh, and his teachings and uh, that will maybe inshallah hopefully accept your work um, throughout your da'wah career inshallah Zakhlah Khair and Deen, bro, for coming on today and doing the show with us. Zakhlah Khair Isa, bro, for joining us okay. and contributing your, you know, your precious insights, mashallah, as well. And brothers and sisters, Zakhlah Khair for watching. Make sure to subscribe, share the video so others can benefit, and we'll catch up with you guys next time. Salaam alaikum.